Hello and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how we install strain gauges on the inside of a small diameter pipe as part of a final year project in civil engineering at the University of Limerick. Firstly, after we had selected our pipe that we were going to install the strain gauges on, we proceeded to etch it using grade 400 abrasive paper. Secondly, we need to degrease the inside of the pipe. We soaked a sponge in acetone and began to scrub the inside of the pipe. Any acetone residue left on the inside of the pipe was cleaned by using a neutralizer. Ethanol was sprayed on a sponge the sponge was then scrubbed along the inside of the pipe, similar to the acetone cleaning process. In order to install the strain gauges on the inside of the pipe without damaging the pipe, we needed to manufacture our own installation tool. The design of this tool was inspired by a paper by Joseph Caliendo of the Utah State University. We modified his design slightly and based mechanical action on that of a car jack. The installation tool has two adjacent arms. On these arms we first place a square of PVC tape. On top of this PVC tape we place double sided sticky tape and on this double sided sticky tape will sit the strain gauge. This serves as a temporary carrier to insert the strain gauge into the pipe. The strain gauge wires are thread forward through the pipe. It is then carefully placed down and pressed up against this double sided sticky tape. Once one strain gauge has been installed, the tool is spun around so a second strain gauge can be installed on the opposite wing. This allows us to install two strain gauges diametrically opposed so we can measure tension and compression. We were surprised by the durability of the strain gauges as we applied them to the insulation tool. They were quite flexible when we tried to place them down and bond them to the double sided sticky tape. Another change since this video was taken is that the two front kickers on the tool have been cut off as they obstructed the path for the wires. We found that sometimes they would get caught on the wall of the pipe as we expanded the arms. The adhesive we used to bond the strain gauges on the inside surface of the pipe was AE10 epoxy. This is made up of two parts, AE resin and curing agent 10. The mix ratio is roughly 10 is to 1.5. That's 10 parts resin AE and 1.5 parts curing agent 10. We only mixed a very small batch of AE10 epoxy as we were only installing two strain gauges at any one time. We mixed the batch for five minutes then we let it stand for five minutes and then we had an additional 20 minutes to install it onto the strain gauge and put the strain gauge onto the pipe. We found not to be too shy when applying the epoxy to the strain gauge as any excess adhesive will spill over the side and be caught by the double sided sticky tape. On some occasions we found that the black PVC tape was left bonded with the strain gauge on the inside of the pipe. Once the epoxy had been applied to the top side of the strain gauge we just inserted the rod up to the required distance inside the pipe. We threaded the wires of the strain gauges out the front of the pipe and we let them fall by their own gravity. This helped put a small bit of tension on the wires which dragged them forward as we inserted the tool inside the pipe. Once the installation tool had been inserted the correct distance 
we twisted the screw to expand the arms and pressed the strain gauges against the side of the pipe. We let this sit then for 24 hours overnight to allow maximum time for the curing of the epoxy. The following morning we would come in and retract the arms.